Is Robbie Ashford really the favorite to win the Auburn quarterback job? Freezing temperatures are likely for several hours inland and a few hours closer to the coast. Yes. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby. And thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. Happy Charlie Tuesday to all who celebrate. We are joined by Auburn message board legend, Charlie Five. We'll talk about Big Cat. We'll talk about Demarcus Riddick. But first things first, Charlie Five. Yesterday, a few different books out in the, you know, the world of Las Vegas roll out odds for who can win these quarterback jobs throughout college football. So naturally, we scroll to Auburn. And Robbie Ashford is the favorite to win the quarterback job. He is at minus 140. Peyton Thorne is at plus 100. Fairly big uh, difference there. I'm shocked. I don't know what to say. Uh, But according to Vegas, according to the the folks that are supposed to know more than anything else, Robbie Ashford's the favorite to win the Auburn quarterback job. I'm Scraping up every every dollar I can right now to go place a bet. Just, just the minute we get off the air, <laughs> just the minute we get off the air, there's just no. There, I I don't know where that that's coming from. There's just no way. You know, I took a week off. I was ready to bug, and then you hit me with this, and I'm ready to talk about Peyton Thorne and bug and and. We'll bug in a second. We'll bug in a second. But no, I I do think. I mean, it's weird, right? Because, I mean, Vegas is Very not in the business of losing of losing money. And if they didn't have any sort of idea, they just wouldn't put the line up, right? I mean, there's only like five or six quarterback battles that they put odds up for anyway. Like, it wouldn't be weird if they just didn't have this line available at all. And so, to me, well, it's got me asking the question, and, you know, also paired with what we saw and heard from Hugh Freeze and Media Days last week. Are we missing something? Are we missing something? When we're evaluating these two quarterbacks, well, the, an, another weird line was uh, the Alabama quarterback battle. They had Jaden Milrow as plus three hundred, so like he is like third uh, in in the Alabama race. Like, I, mm-hmm. and Ty Simpson, Ty Simpson's number one, Beckner or whatever his name is number two. I would have thought. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. I, I'm not really. I don't keep up with Alabama that well, but. Milrow's the one that started in place of Bryce last year. Right. Uh, I I kind of felt like he would probably be a little bit. It would be a lot more closer odds, but three to one to, for for Milrow. I mean, maybe they just I, I don't know. That, they just maybe they're hoping nobody sees these lines and they just put them out there just to put them out there. That's I, not who. That's not what Vegas does though. And so I'm just wondering, like, what made them do that? Because everybody I talk to. It's all about how great Peyton Thorne is and workouts, leadership. Uh, There's people that I talk to that participate in workouts and I'm like, they'll tell me how Peyton did. I'm like, how did Robbie do in the back? Robbie wasn't there. I mean, that is a fairly regular thing. Um, So, I mean, I, I just, I just don't really know. Like, it seems like we're missing something. I don't. I don't think we are. I think it's first of all, it's not that big of a spread difference. It's minus one forty to plus one hundred. So mm-hmm. it's not that that far like out of whack. It's not like Peyton Thorns like three to one. You know the starter and and Robbie's the other way. It's they're they're pretty close. Like it's it's within. You know, it's 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 almost the same. He Robbie's definitely favored, but the thing is, maybe it's the incumbent. Maybe the incumbent gets a little bit more weight. He started last year. I don't know. They, they, you know, I will at, tell you this. I will tell you this because some people may see the incumbent thing and just put money on it. The amount of people in the SEC at SEC media is that cover other teams in the SEC asked, Is Robbie the starter last week at media days? And I'm like, No, we brought in Peyton Thorne. This wasn't some big story like we thought it, it was big here, but yeah. it didn't like send, you know, this big massive shockwave throughout the conference. So that, that could be the angle. That's 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 very interesting. I, that's not something that I, I mean. I kind of thought that was the big, like I thought that was huge news. I, I, I I'm surprised that other people are just auto assuming that Ro- Robbie would just be the starter, and maybe that's maybe that's where this this lot this is coming. Perhaps from. who knows? Perhaps or maybe maybe Robbie's impressing people different than the folks that we're talking to, and I mean that's certainly 
Certainly, the ca- it could be the case. I mean, Hugh Freeze certainly talked him up a week ago. We did a show on it. Um, and of course, a lot of people had a lot of different opinions, but talking about how athletic Robbie is, you know, perhaps, I mean, that's not really what odd makers do. They don't really base things off of what coaches say at media days, but, you know, perhaps they could, ju- they, you know, somebody out there seeing how athletic Robbie is and you pair him in a Hugh Freeze offense and the upside yeah. is certainly, certainly there. Maybe maybe it's that. I, I don't know. I, I was just really surprised at the line. Um, I'll still be surprised if Robbie wins the job. Mm-hmm. But maybe it's more of a competition than we thought, and that's a good thing for Auburn. Competition is always good. I, I, I you kind of hit on it. I, I'm, I'm wondering also if like people are looking at oh Malik Willis, Robbie Ashford trying to draw. The, that's what we did for draw, months. That's what we did for the- months. Yeah, draw the comparisons yep. there. That's more of a Hugh Freeze quarterback than maybe a Peyton Thorne. Who knows? Which I've heard Peyton Thorne has sneaky wheels. I've heard I've heard that from a lot of the workouts. He's mm-hmm. not like it's not like he's a statue at all. He can move. So, um, but you know, I don't, it's that's the most shocking news of the day. That's that you could have told me a five star was going to commit. And you could have told me this, and I'd have been more shocked over this than I would be at some type of some five. I think I think I'm with you, actually. <laughs> I think I'm with yeah. you. Yeah. Um and like I I'm I mean, I'm I think if Robbie wins the job, like it's good for Auburn because that means he put it all together, right? And so, but that's just not what we're hearing. Here's another here's another thing. Here's another aspect you could think of. Like, are, is Robbie gonna have a package where he gets he gets on the feet like a pat like certain packages in the offense and does he just technically go out first and, and I don't think like, he would do that I thought about that but Hugh places such a leadership hat on whoever wins whoever his quarterback is I think it's got to be a symbolic thing like you won the battle you're the first to go out there I think. Yeah. But I mean, I, I, we all agree that Robbie should and probably will have packages. Sure, sure. That's that was just another thing. That's like that, that was just one of the other things. Like, did do they have a mm-hmm. package for him? And at, at that point, start time, the game. Busted. Mm-hmm. If if that's the case, though, you might we may get investigated for you know gambling or whatever whatever it is for. No kidding. <laughs> trying to hit. Yeah, I stay away from that. Yeah, we'll stay away from that for sure. And also, like, do you want? I know you got to do it some. But I don't really want to run the Robbie specific package stuff until Cal. I don't really know if I really want to run it at all, but yeah, at least till Cal, at least till Cal when you when you need it. You um, don't you don't think there should be a Robbie package? You're not you're not for that. I'm kind of I'm kind of over that, man. I, I I would rather I I, I maybe maybe on goal line. I, I but th- but then again, it just disrupts flow and and. It, Peyton can run too. Uh, I just, I, I'm, I get not, it. I'm, I'm sort of over the this. I'm sort of over that. That I got. You it. know what I mean? We we I, we've I done it a bunch. Had little success with it. Kind of ready to, ready to move on. I'm ready to go drop. You know, drop a number on Peyton to win the starting job and uh, and see what happens. Okay. All right. All right. Demarcus Riddick could be one of the bigger recruiting wins in recent Auburn memory. We'll discuss what that could potentially look like coming up tomorrow um, in just a moment, right here on Locked On Auburn. Today's show brought to you by our new friends at Active Wealth Management. Our friend Ford Stokes, he runs Active Wealth Management, and he's also the author of the book, Annuity 360. Charlie Five, name something you love more than recruiting. Go. Uh, Wealth and annuities. That's right. That's right. And the best combination of those two things is by reaching out to our friends at Active Wealth Management. And the craziest thing, the craziest thing, is you can get this book for free because Ford loves the Auburn family and he wants to make us all super, super rich so we can all give two on to victory and just blow everyone out in the NIO world. I think that's exactly why he wants to do it. I'm going to take all the money that I win on Peyton Thorne winning the starting job and I'm giving it all to Ford to make me wealthy. Yep, yep. Like, hey, Set me up some annuities with all these winnings, please. No, he wants to give his book, Annuity 360, away for free. All you have to do is visit annuity360.net. Submit your contact info, and you'll receive a complimentary copy of Ford's book, Annuity 360, just like Charlie Five and I have on screen here. 
Uh, but seriously, they, um, they've been doing this in the business at a very high level for a long time. Um, Ford's registered investment advisor, Brookstone Capital, manages over $8.5 billion in assets. Billion. So he, billion. That's a B. So he knows what he's doing. So uh, head over to activewealth.com. And also, if you need more podcasts, you can head over to uh, Ford's financial radio shows. You can listen to them, activewealthshow.com. Trust me, you don't want to miss out on the valuable insight that Ford provides. If you hate money, don't do it. But if you love money, give it a shot. Charlie Five, our guest every single Tuesday on this Charlie Tuesday. Demarcus Riddick announcing uh, before Big Cat Weekend. And it really seems like Auburn's the favorite here. And as we get closer and closer, Alabama fans are being like more and more jerks to the child. And it's like, this seems great. This seems like a really good situation. Great sign. Yes. It's a great yes. sign. When, Keep when showing your true colors, Bama fans. Whenever character is to, is called into question and work ethic and things like that, you you got to feel good. You got you feel like you've broken them at that point in time. You feel That's like right. You, you Did we like want them anyway? Right. Yeah. All that stuff. Exactly. Exactly. Like, we no, want you, Demarcus. You come to Auburn, please. Bring whatever character you have, and let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Hit people in the face. No, That's right. This is one thing I don't want people to forget. Okay, and I want you to think about this when you're thinking about recruiting and, and, and Hugh Freeze and, and moving forward. Hugh Freeze was not here 24 hours. He was not here 24 hours, and the first place he went was Demarcus Russ, Demarcus Riddick's basketball game in Clanton, Alabama. That was one of the I got. I it seemed like I got pictures of Hugh at this basketball game. I got a lot of family from this area. Uh, I got pictures of Hugh at this basketball game. Almost, it seemed like before he even was announced, he was hired. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's not the case, but it was that fast right after he was hired. This is one of the, the – it's just – it's cool to see us put priority on somebody and be able uh, – not just anybody, a five-star kid, one of the top players in the state, be able to put a priority on somebody and then get them. I mean, that just and, – and if it plays out that way – uh, which, like you said, all signs seem to be pointing that way. It's, it's just it's a sign. I feel like it's a sign of things to come. It's a sign of things to come. I mean, talk about a perfect scenario where he's been committed to Georgia and Georgia still wants him. They're still recruiting him. And he's like, mm, I'm either going to go to Auburn or Alabama. And we're in a situation to beat out Alabama for him. I mean, can you imagine a more perfect scenario than this? It's kind of it's the old double whammy. I may old, start crying in a second. Like, old, I mean, what old, an incredible scenario. Yep. No one two punch. No, I love it. I love it. Um, another thing that I like about you getting a guy like this is this is where you start seeing this is the the caliber of player that other players kind of want to play with, or that right. that when when guys like this start joining your program, it makes other people sort of turn an eye and be like, Hey, what am I, you know, I may want to you know, I may want to give this a second look or I want to be right. a part of this. It's something special. And then he's going to be here for the weekend. Uh, it's just uh, it's, a, it's a big deal. It, it, it could be a really big deal. These kids are so savvy and so aware of all of the pieces that are constantly moving throughout the region, throughout the conference, but especially in Auburn, Alabama, Georgia, because they're all being recruited by the same schools. And just the message of – okay, Auburn and Hugh Freeze and the staff have now gotten two guys, assuming DeMarcus chooses to come to Auburn. They'll have then gotten two guys that Georgia really, really wanted. Yep. And you and I talked about this before Auburn got Joseph Phillips, who everybody thought was going to go to Georgia. It's like, the, we need one guy to do it. To say, like, it's okay to do this. It, yep. You can be cool. You can be a part of this. You can be celebrated at Auburn. And I just got a feeling. Talking about Boogan, here we go. I just got a feeling it's going to be Riddick. And then, you know, we may get another five-star this weekend. Like, I, I just really feel that in my bones, Charlie. Oh, Bob. yeah. I, and, and you know, there could be more. Uh, there could be more than just another one more five-star that see this and see the action from this weekend that I'm sure we're going to talk about. Um, but he's committing on a day where we're going to have another five-star on campus uh, mm -hmm. on Wednesday. That's Camarion Franklin. So, like, 
that's another thing you're starting. You could possibly start seeing this chain reaction uh, of dudes. You got Joseph Phillips in the, in, you know, in the bag. And then and now you possibly, you stand a good chance to land Demarcus Riddick. Uh, the sky's the limit. The sky's the limit. I mean, that puts you in a, in a situation to, I mean, close out a top 10 class, right? I mean, you've done everything up to this point the right way. And you've kind of done it from behind, which is encouraging. Um, Always. And then all of a sudden, like if you win a few games, you're not supposed to. I mean, anything could happen in December. Uh, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. But we're about to have, I think, and we're going to talk a little bit more about it. But I think this is about to be the start of a chain reaction, uh, an, an electric twelve to fifteen days of just f a fury of commits and, and high level commits and it's going to be uh it's going to be a lot i think we're gonna have a lot of lot of fun yeah i mean you've covered auburn recruiting longer than i've been alive because you're that much older than me <laughs> and, and uh i mean have you ever the if what we think is going to happen over the next two to three weeks have you ever seen something like this happen before? Only one time ever before. And that yeah. was the first full recruiting class under Chiswick. It was the 2000, the, which would have right. been that 2010 class. That's like Trevon Reed, we Michael had, Dyer. I was, I was there when this happened. We were at Tumor's Corner and you had, you legit, you literally had, uh, Lake C Strunk, you had uh what was the kid that went to um South, South Carolina, Carolina uh, Marcus uh, Lattimore. Lattimore. Yeah, you had all Mrs. these Neo. five star dudes lined up at Tumor's Corner, everybody going nuts, throwing toilet paper in the trees. Like that's the that's the feel that I have right now, and that's the feel that I think we're gonna have this weekend. Uh it's gonna the list is just incredible. There's like I think I saw a stat that's like ten percent, at least ten percent or more of the five stars in this class will be on campus, it's crazy. Uh, which is cra which is crazy to think about. So, uh, ten or fifteen percent of the of all the five stars. So it's uh it's um, and then you got five stars in the twenty twenty five class that are going to mm -hmm. be here. So right. um, it's 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 just it's it's big, man. It's big, man. You sometimes you always you almost worry, is it too big? Mm -hmm. because these guys want attention. Can you give everybody the amount of attention or is it, I'm, I'm sure they fought all the different angles. Um, uh, but, but yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be big. All right. Charlie five, you got to give some predictions. How many guys do you think pop this weekend at big cat and who are some of the names we should be looking for? We'll tell you in just a moment right here on locked on Auburn today's show brought to you by our friends at eBay motors. Charlie five. Do you have a car? I do have I do have one. Yes. Yep. Yep. If you drive and you have a car and something ever happens to your car, you need to head over to eBay Motors because with the eBay guaranteed fit, you can be sure that every part you need fits right the first time around. Question Charlie 5, have you ever wanted to buy a part for your car and it not fit? I, I mean, I just had to do this with tires and, you know, I mm -hmm. wanted to get tires that just couldn't, that, that I could, I couldn't get the right fit. Yeah. If you don't want it's your parts not. to fit, eBay is not for you. Right. <laughs> but if you want them to fit, eBay motors is where to go. Uh, check out eBay motors.com slash uh, locked on Auburn. Uh, once again, get the right parts, the right fit and the right prices at eBay motors.com eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBayMotors.com. Auburn family, let's ride. Looking at Big Cat Weekend, Charlie Five. Give me a number, and we'll count Riddick in this. So just the next okay. four days. Okay, so how many, through, su through Sunday evening. Yeah, how many guys pop? I'm going to say a combination. There could be a combination of dudes, but I'm going to say at least four. I think I think at least four. At least four? Yeah. Oh wow. Who okay, give me four names. Well, I mean we already talked about Riddick, right? You have Riddick yeah, in that four. Riddick, okay. and then obviously, you know, the big talk is could Perry pop? Could Perry pop this weekend? Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, you know, he's gonna be here. He's been, you know Perry Thompson committed Perry to Thompson's Alabama a lot wide of, receiver, four star uh, slash five star guy. Yep. A lot of the buzz has been around him. 
Uh, I think he's buddies with a guy named uh, Malcolm Simmons from Benjamin Russell, who uh, is coming in that this weekend, who is is very high on Auburn, and we're very high on him. You got mm-hmm. a guy like Reese Baker, who you know, are we ready to take his commitment? Uh, offensive lineman from uh, North Alabama. Uh, you got guys like uh, DeAndre Carter, who we've heard nothing but good, like nothing but it's just keeps going up. Everything you hear, like it's getting better and better and better. With, See a tackle? With He's an offensive tackle. Offensive tackle from one of the top high schools in the whole country. Uh, um, out in California. Um, then you got guys like um, I'm trying to think of some other dudes. There's a there's the Louisville running back. Du- is it Duke Watson? I think is his name. Yeah. Are we going to offer him? Are we going to put? We've already offered we've him. Offered but, him. Yeah. You know, or do you want to push? Do you want to? I feel like if you push for a guy like that, you could get a guy like him. He doesn't have, seem that committed to Louisville, by the way. Oh, sure, sure. He's he's looking. There's a yeah. guy named Dimitri Nichols from South uh, South Florida, Opalaka, not Opalika, Opalaka. Florida, big defensive tack, inside defensive um, defensive lineman. Um, you know, could somebody like he, if we push, you got Camarion Franklin, who's going to mm-hmm. be here to uh, on Wednesday, and he tweeted commitment soon. I mean, I think he may have a trip planned at right after this, but could he get all caught up in everything and want to pull the trigger? I mean, he did say commitment soon. So, I mean, there are dudes – right there on the edge. And I think you're going to get at least four of them by the end of Sunday. And just the buzz then going into fall camp. Like, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's pretty wild what Hugh has done. And you know, he played it off when he was asked about the energy of the fan base. He played it off and Auburn posted a clip last night about it, about how it's like, it's not about us. It's not about the coaching staff or anything like that. It's about the fans buying into, you know, the program, you know, talking about like the records, sells for you know season tickets or whatever and i'm like I mean, maybe but like i mean you, you you've really sold it hugh like i mean you've really yeah. sold it not only to to fans but i mean it just feels like there's a plan in place for the first time in a long time and i don't think we realized that we didn't have a plan until we saw somebody come in with a plan and it's like man this is crazy like goes back to the a and m game last year for the first time in years since i've been covering the team we saw the football team and the fans, and the money, the boosters, you know, with powers that be, all in line at the same time. And ever since that moment, I mean, it's just been a different, so it's been a different feeling. And you're seeing it come through with recruiting now. Yeah, and I mean, and Hughes, he gets here, he sees how dire the situation is and how bad we need talent. And he hires, essentially, head coaches to run both sides of the ball, and so he can recruit seventy hours a day. I mean, it's mm-hmm. it's or seventy hours a week. It's like it's it's in, it's in, it's incredible. He is it's it. I don't even know how he gets anything done. He, I mean, he is literally that's all all he's doing. And and you're not. We we just continued. We we heard stories and heard stories about how you just you you miss this, you miss that. He doesn't miss anything. He doesn't miss anything. He knows when deadlines are up. He knows when he can talk to him. He knows when he can't talk to him. And he's sitting there chomping at the bit, waiting for the the the, the clock to tick down so he can call, text, do whatever. Um, and I there's I don't think there's many head coaches that are that are. I don't think they're that hands off and I'm 100% recruiting like, like he's doing right now. And um, it's fun. And he's at a stage where part. like he has to, I mean, yeah, he has no choice. Nick and Kirby are, were probably at that point, but like after you win and get to that point where it's like a, a machine, you know, you don't really have to do that as much. Let me, let me ask you the other side of this. Okay. What if the next two weeks don't go well, what happens then? I would say I would if if Demarcus Riddick does not commit tomorrow uh, does not commit tomorrow uh, to Auburn, I would be worried that we may not have the right read on the guys that we think we have. Like it, yeah, that would make me think the Cam Coleman thing was not an outlier. That would make Ooh, me think interesting. Maybe maybe we don't necessarily have as a good of a feel of the guys that we think we do. That that. That's when I would start to kind of – because right now yeah. I feel like the positive buzz is because we feel like we're getting a lot of positive feedback. And if that one goes wrong, I would say, okay, maybe they're, they're, maybe we need to pump the brakes a little bit. But, if hey, if it, if it happens, 
boog on, 100%, pedal to the metal, booging and annuities, let's do it. That's right. That's right. First, we're thinking about our annuities, activewealth.com. Yes. Then we celebrate. Yes. Then we celebrate. Absolutely. Yes. Charlie Five, how can people give you some love, brother? Absolutely. Find me on Twitter at the underscore Charlie underscore five in the Locked on Auburn Discord every single day or on uh, aulive.com, the corner message board, and then weekly every uh, every so often on the Dad by Golf Bot. Follow me on socials at Z Blackerby and read all my own work at auburndaily.com. And we'll see you tomorrow. This has been Locked on Auburn.